huge tokens of all the hype right now. The last time I checked, there are over 400 huge tokens listed on CoinMarketCap as of May 2020. The main function of huge tokens is a utility function, but they could have other kind of functions that are similar to cash or currency. These tokens are important in engaging the exchange's community and to capture value generated from the the ecosystem. The token also makes up the incentive mechanism or incentive model, which is the economics that we want to uncover today. The top huge token currently in the market is Binance, which is one of the top traders of coins as well. So today we're going to deep dive into Binance native token, BNB token. Three things we're going to cover today. One, the market design of BNB token. Two, the token structure, which includes the monetary policy and valuation of BNB token. And three, we're going to look at the financial incentives of BNB token on BNB's platform. This is part of the token economics framework. If you have not watched it or read about it, download the research paper in our link of just above. So, let's get started. Before I begin, I just want to make a quick clarification. Token economics is the concern of economics ecosystem in which the tokens exist in. It is more than just the token itself. Just like in economics, we don't only focus on the economics of money. There is a specific view for that called monetary economics. In economics, we discuss many things like building the ecosystem or country where the token or the money exists in. The specific field in token economics that talks only about the token itself is, the, is called token design or token engineering. They're quite similar but also quite different. The general idea though is the same. It's all about designing the token itself. Today we're going to talk about token economics which involves more than just the token itself. It includes market design, mechanism design, incentive design, resolution mechanisms, monetary policy, and all these other aspects that add together to give value to the token. But market design. If you recall from the previous episode, we did a crash course on market design. The full episode is on education.economicsdesign.com. Market design is the design of the environment in which the tokens exist in. In market design, we also understand the primary objective of the ecosystem, so as to design the right market for it. We have to talk about objectives. When we start designing anything, it's like calculating the optimization function in calculus. You need to know what you're optimizing. You need to know what you're looking for. It's also like in dating. If you don't know what you're looking for, then any, anything goes, any puzzle goes. Back to BNB token. What is the main objective of BNB token? The main objective is to use it as a utility token with the function of getting a discount on trading fees. The objective might change in the future, but that's the objective right now, today, that's what we're focused on and what we're dealing with. Of course, there are secondary objectives that grows or that comes up as the ecosystem evolves. For example, holding it as a store of value due to its deflationary feature, Trading it with other crypto, crypto assets or crypto tokens as a medium of exchange to spend it on other goods like in stock purchases or to donate to charity. These are endless use cases. Right now, there are 31 use cases in BNB, or you can use BNB in 31 different use cases. Are they all on Binance platform? Not really. Which brings me to, which brings me to the first factor in market design fitness. We're talking about fitness, we're talk, not talking about fitness with the 2C, we're just talking about fitness as a prerequisite. To, to attain network effects. Since Binance is an exchange, like all two-sided platforms, we need to achieve fitness from both ends of the user base. For exchange specifically, that means market takers and market makers. But in the token ecosystem that we're talking about, we're talking about businesses that accept BNB token and the value that it can bring to users themselves. Let's start with businesses. Binance being one of the top few exchanges, it can tap into the network to establish partnerships. Remember our episode on Facebook's Libra token and their partnerships? Binance is doing something similar. Instead of Libra and the middleman doing exchange and validating all the transactions, Binance has partners who accept BNB token into the, in their platform. This could be for activities like travel, paying for bills, earning interest in stakes, shopping, and all the other stuff. There are 31 partners in total. Of course, these are just secondary objectives as mentioned. The main objective is due to use the token to get a discount on trading fees in Binance. For users, Binance launched the BNB token with an ICO. That is the only distribution of tokens and the rest are kept. To attract users to increase thickness, BNB tokens are deflationary, which increases the value in the long run and attracts people to hold them. There are also many other use cases to attract different types of users beyond traders. For example, Binance has its own incubator and launch pad. There, transactions are only done in BNB. Token is also traded on Binance, which provides price discovery and monetary value to the token. With the deflationary feature, price discovery, and many different use cases, it incentivizes profit users to hold BNB tokens for price appreciation in the future. Crack 
two. Token structure. Token structure is part of token design. In token structure, we apply default into the token's monetary policy and valuation, which I think you're probably most interested in. For supply, there is a max supply of EAV token at 200 million tokens. 100 million is distributed to public via ICO, 80 million is to the founding members, and 20 million is to investors. Now let's talk a little bit about the changes in token. Unlike Bitcoin, there is no slow increase in supply, it's just distributed at the start. The 200 million tokens are distributed, that's it. It's also not like Libra, where there is no increase in supply by increasing more assets and securities being blocked by the Libra network. Instead, BNB is a decrease in supply. Every quarter, BNB will burn some of the BNB until 100 BNBs are destroyed, which is 50% of the total supply. Token burn is where a token is destroyed and cannot be used again. For example, it can be sent to a wallet with an unknown private key and it will be destroyed. It will not, the tokens will not come into existence. So these tokens are traded out of the circulating supply. What does this mean though? This is similar to share buyback, shares buyback in the equities market. Companies use their profit to buy shares to increase the value of each share. In the same way, finance burns part of their tokens from the profits that they generate to increase the value of the remaining tokens in the market. What is the value from though? Remember that the main objective of BNB is used to reduce the trading fees? Well, finance collect these BNB tokens as their profits. At the end of each quarter, they will burn some of these tokens. The monetary policy of finance is a super, super deflationary feature. I mentioned that BNB has a deflationary feature. What does it mean? It means that the value of token increases with time. This is done through burning some of the existing supply of BNB tokens, so that the value is not spread through less amounts of tokens. Initially, BNB was burned as a proportion of the profits generated from the exchange through the trading fees. For example, 50% of BNB tokens are used to pay for trading fees will be burned each at the end of each quarter. But now, as the use cases of BNB expand, the amount of BNB burnt is not based on the profits, but based on self-reported values. This caused some controversy in the space, since we're all about transparency. But let's go back to economics. Let's break this down into economic science, two foundational principles, supply and demand, and behavior economics. If you missed this episode, there are episodes one for this. Let's start with supply demand explanation. Basing solely on the main objective, let's say BNB tokens are only used to reduce trading fees. Of course, the more use cases there are of BNB, the better this explanation is. The more people use BNB tokens to reduce the trading fees, the more tokens will be burned, hence the increase in value of each token. Simply, if we have 10 bags and 10 apples, each bag will have one apple. But if we decide to burn 50% of the bags, we're going to burn 5 bags, each bag will now have 2 apples, which increases the value. Each bag is more valuable now. So in the same way, with each burn, the value of BNB tokens will increase. That being said, it does not mean monetary value, it just means value to you. It could be reflected in monetary value, but that's probably in the long run. What about behavioral economics explanation? For people who see value in the long run, they will hold BNB tokens and pay in other inflationary currencies or tokens like USDT. The inflationary tokens will reduce value in the long run, so long-term believers will buy and hold BNB tokens. There are also people who see value in the short run. This could be a trader making a huge trade, and the discount in trading allows the BNB tokens to generate better value than holding it in hopes of price appreciation in the future. So they rather use it now because it just makes sense. Now, there is also a collective good behavior here. When we talk about the behavior economy, it's always about collective. When people see more people using or more users paying trading fees in BNB tokens, this signals a reduced confidence in BNB prices in the future. Even if the rational structure is a deflationary mechanism, the, inf- the behavioral model could say otherwise. Having transparency in BNB burning is a double edged sword. On one hand, we have full transparency to how many tokens are burned for accountability purposes. On the other, we have some quarters are significantly more than others. It shows other traders that BNB tokens are not so valuable to hold, so you're better off using it now because it gives you more value. But trading volume is too low, and this could signal a low value in using BNB tokens, and it's not worthy to pay it for price appreciation. Considering that there are so many use cases of BNB, 31 in total, this makes sense that finance calculates burn volume via their internal matrix than just trading volume. BNB might generate more, more value in other markets than just using it for trading fees. So basing it solely on trading fees will not be a fair assessment to the value of BNB tokens. Probably they're using it as an amount of profits being burned and just kept divided by the amount of price per BNB token to determine the total quantity of tokens. As of currently as of May 2020, there are over 20 million tokens burned. That's 10 percent of the total supply. Since the value of BNB fluctuates, the value of burn also fluctuates. So the value burnt each quarter fluctuates. The value of BNB token has fluctuated, but remains one of the strongest altcoins so far. It's one of the top eight altcoins. There are 
there are also some research that shows that the PE, you use PE value to determine if BME is over or undervalued. All the reports I've read so far show that it's undervalued, but I'm not crazy about it. We use price earning ratio, P e ratio, to determine the relative value of a company's share of equity with another company's share or historical data. This is a good enough matrix to consider when valuing total price. However, do remember the BMB is not equity per share. My issue here is not about P e value ratio. Rather, I view BMB similar to that of airline loss. BMB price is directly connected to the achievements of BMB finance as a business. Like airline loss, BAB has no legal obligation to protect the value of BAB and the users the way a company might be responsible to their acquisition owners. Airline mills are independent entities from the airline itself. They can accrue value from within the ecosystem and extract value via network partners like hotels and car rental. But the truth is that no matter how independent they are, the success is still very much interrelated and correlated to the fundamental business the airline itself. When an airline is going bankrupt today, then we see airline mills are also going down with them. Technically and legally speaking, they are separate entities. But in reality, it's hard for airline miles to survive when the airline is bankrupt. Case in point, um, Air Berlin and Jet Airways. With Binance, the success of BNB token is conditional on Binance's success. The PE ratio might be undervalued today, but there are other factors to consider and other matrix to consider when valuing the token more than just from an independent price of them. We have to look at the cross correlation value. Also, as much as a deflationary mechanism increases value, it is not guaranteed. Burning tokens is only affecting the supply side. You also have the demand side to deal with. Just because there are less in circulation doesn't mean that people are demanding more and doesn't mean that the price will increase for each token that's in the circulating market. How then can we attain a decent price for BNB? By ensuring that there is a demand for it, which moves us to the last section of financial incentives. Financial incentive is one of the pillars in token design. On Binance, each trade increase is standard fee of 0.1%. Traders can use BNB to get to pay for trading fees and get a discount. The discount follows a decreasing share. When it started in 2017, paying in BNB gives you a 50% discount in trading fee. That's a lot. In 2020 of this year, the discount received is now 6.25%. That's quite a marginal discount, it's not a lot. So going back to the point of burning BNB from trading, you can see why Binance has shifted to other reporting values than just trading. With just 6.25% in discount, the deflationary pressure users are more likely to use BNB on other avenues than getting discount on trading fees. That's why by 2021, BNB will not be used to receive discounts anymore. The use case of BNB expands to other platforms like staking and redemption of other services. When Binance allows users to use BNB to get a fee, they are basically doing a pre-sale with their ICO per period. Users purchase BNB tokens to be used later. There was a real use case instead of purchasing the tokens in hopes for price appreciation in the future, which is where pumps and numbers get to be talked about. When traders trade in large volume, they are incentivized to purchase BNB to reduce the fees. There is money monetary gain from the trade. Using BNB to pay for trading is also not too costly for the exchange. Surely, it is diluting the, one of their revenue streams, but the value is going back to earlier dollars. Since it is the token that they created, there is not much to lose for allowing a discount to trading fees with BNB token. What they have to do though is to use this opportunity, this lead time, to attract more users into the space, to attract more early adopters into the space, and to give real use cases to to develop real use cases with BNB tokens to affect the demand side. At the end of the day, it is still affects supply of tokens while allowing the market to dictate the demand. Another way Binance is encouraging supply chain is via staking on the platform. High volume traders must hold certain BNB in their accounts to unlock more discounts. Think of it like a subscription model. I subscribe to the newsletters and podcasts by locking up economic design tokens, and I'm not losing out because by locking it up gives me access to all the items and resources in economic design. Similarly, for high volume traders, this subscription model is better than using BNB tokens to get discounts on individual trades. This locked up tokens further reduces the token available. As of May 2020, 30, 33 million BNB tokens are locked up and frozen. Taking the total supply minus tokens burn minus lock up, that's about 147 BNB tokens circulating today. BNB holders can also stake BNB to get returns on the asset via the new update in April 2020. Binance blockchain is moving to a staking based consensus mechanism and will also run smart contracts. Gas fees will be paid in BNB. Validators get to collect gas fees from transactions. Validators have to stake BNB before becoming a validator. And of course, you have other mechanisms and other models, which are finance partners, which gives you returns on BNB via the staking mechanisms. That's external of finance platform itself. In conclusion, this native token is created by the pump. Instead of recycling it by putting it back into the ecosystem, some are being burned. Recycling is also known as the multiply effect. It's like you pay, you pay money for your fried chicken, and the fried chicken company uses it to pay for their, to their suppliers. And then the suppliers will also pay and spread it into the system. 
Now, instead of that, you're paying for fractional risk to make money. And part of that money is gone. So it reduces the total available money in the ecosystem. Money doesn't affect prices directly, but it does affect it in the long run. Is this a good mechanism? Sure. It exists to solve the objective and purpose of EMB's role in finance ecosystem. Is it the best system in the world? That's quite hard to say because deflationary assets have other issues and they might not be suitable for your use case. For example, people don't want to be paying stuff in BNB because of the deflationary effects and because they can have higher returns in the future by just holding it and keeping it as a store of value. Ultimately, why is this mechanism used? It's definitely not possible to keep buying back and burning tokens forever. Instead, this mechanism gives Binance more lead time to build the community, reward early adopters, and just take a network and develop real use cases to solve the ever changing dynamics of the users and participants. Instead of using a lot of leadership to grow and attract users like Lily Class or Uber, Binance issues that its own native token to attract users while continuously extracting value from the ecosystem. That's it for Binance and BNB and BNB token. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below or just comment and comment and I'll get back to you. And if anything that you're interested and you want to know more about, just make suggestions in the comments and I will get back to that. Till then, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!